Now, I would like to invite our scripture reader to come forward and uh, share from the Word of God for us. Today's scripture comes from Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. God told Abram, leave your country, your family, and your father's home for a land that I will show you. I'll make you a great nation and bless you. I'll make you famous. You'll be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you. Those who curse you, I'll curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Thanks, Amy. Uh, Today is week two in a new series that we are calling Easiest, Hardest Questions. So these are questions that on their surface, the answer seems obvious. Um, So last week we talked about who are you? Um, But then when you ask the question again and again and look At a deeper level, you realize uh, how much more is really going on at the heart of those questions. And uh, next week, we are going to be talking about the question, what do you want? And uh, right now, maybe you just want another cup of coffee. Maybe, uh, Maybe you want lunch. Maybe you heard the word cake, and that's what you want more than anything. Um... But we're going to talk about what's beneath all of that next week. Today, we're going to talk about where are you going? And again, these are the easiest, hardest questions. So on its surface, this is one of the simplest questions to ask. Um, In my home, I have four young children, and so sometimes I'll hear the patter of little feet as they start scampering in the basement, and then they uh, hustle up the stairs and breeze past me as I'm standing in the kitchen, and I yell, where are you going? Um, And they'll yell back at me, I'm going to the potty, because you can't uh, plan ahead. It's always at the very last possible second. Um, And they're still young now, but I know that when they're in high school, I'll still be asking that question. As as they're halfway out the door, I'll say, where are you going? And they'll answer, out. And and of course, that's not the kind of answer that I'll be looking for. Um, I need specifics with my precious children and where they are headed. And we all like to have that kind of specific information all mapped out, not just with where our kids are hanging out, We all have this drive to know where we are all going with our future. So where are you going to college, right? Where are you going on vacation? Where are you going with your life? And even in a world where people are always asking, where are you going? Many of us feel like we're leading a meandering existence. Our destination is unclear. Where are you going? to work, then home, to bed, and then repeat. Where are you going? Around in circles, maybe? Many of us spend a lot of our time running the rat race, and the life of a rat is not one most of us aspired to when we set our destination many years ago. And that seemingly simple question, where are you going, appears throughout the Bible in some fascinating ways. As we heard in our reading this morning, God appeared to a man named Abram long before Moses or King David or Jesus. And the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land I will show you. And God just showed up to Abram. No context, no introductions. Abram did not have a Bible or a religion to follow that gave him any context for what was happening. This is before all of that. God just showed up. Just a voice from heaven calling Abram to leave the only world he'd ever known and embark on an adventure and a mystery that would change his life forever. And that's why Abram, who changed his name to Abraham, is known as the father of faith. He put his trust in a God he'd never met and set off on a destination he knew not where. But God attached a pretty sweet incentive to that challenge. Here's how that scripture goes on. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. This is God speaking to Abram. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse and All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So God issues this challenge to Abraham. Follow me wherever. 
Let me set the destination, and I will lavish you with blessing. And not only you, but the blessing that you get will be so incredible, it will spill over onto the whole. Makes it kind of hard to say no, huh? Jesus made Abram an offer. journey. The story began with Abraham. The, the story began with Abraham. It continues on through Moses. And after leading the Hebrew people out of slavery in Egypt, Moses was tasked by God to lead these people into a land of their own. And to get there, they followed Moses through the desert for 40 years. Maybe you've heard this one. And how many times do you think one of those people scampered up to the front of the caravan and tugged on Moses' sleeve just so they could look him in the eye and say, Hey, Moses, uh, where are you going? Or uh, in the modern vernacular, are we there yet? Right? Like, I can't even get from my house to the school five minutes away without... how bad that was getting. <laughs> you guys don't quiet down. I will pull this nation over, and I will go back there. Anyway, the truth is Moses didn't really know where he was going. He didn't have a clear view of the destination. He simply trusted God as his compass. He knew how to set one foot in front of the other, following God into the future uncertain as it may be. The path ahead may be a mystery to us, just like it was to Moses, but we can place our trust in God who knows exactly where this road is going. Moses and the Hebrew people who followed him were chasing down that same promise that Abraham received from God. Follow me to a land that I will show you and I will bless you and you will be a blessing to the whole world. Sometimes our lives feel directionless. Whether we're between jobs or in a bad relationship or just in a funk of our own making. There are seasons in life when it feels like we're just meandering, just adrift. Everything around us is demanding to know, where are you going? Right? We're supposed to have dry and focus so that we can be successful and make something of our lives, right? But sometimes we just can't see the path ahead. And today I'm here to tell you that even if your destination is unclear, you can still step into the future with hope and with confidence. You can be like Abraham, setting out on a quest to God knows where. Because God literally knows where, even if you don't. And if you feel like you're lost, uh, like you're driving your life down in, uh, driving your life around in the dark, and you feel like you're running out of gas, maybe you simply need to pull over and ask for directions. Or maybe that's not your situation. Maybe you do have drive. Maybe you do have focus. Maybe you know exactly where your life is going. Maybe you're already there. Maybe you have reached your financial goals and your career goals and your relationship goals and your life is pretty much following the course that you had all laid out from the beginning. If that's you, first, I'm taking you to Vegas with me. <laughs> Second, there's still more for you too. Just because you've reached the top, don't think that you've reached your destination. Uh, any UFC fans here? You don't have to admit it. Uh, I actually, I don't, I don't, fo I don't follow the sport personally. Uh, it's, uh, uh, but, uh, but if you were tuned in last weekend, you saw uh, a fight in a women's division uh, featuring an underdog named Rose Namayunas. I practiced saying that last name, uh, who knocked out the defending women's champion in the very first round to win the strawweight championship. And that's fine and all. 
but frankly, I'm not interested in telling you anything else about the fight. It's the interview afterwards that was fascinating to me. So while Nama Yunus was standing in the middle of the ring with the championship belt draped over her shoulder, the post-fight interviewer came up to her and asked the question, what does this win mean to you? And, here's the, and, and there's an answer we've all come to expect when someone asks this question of a professional athlete, right? This means everything. This is where it's all been leading. I have arrived. I am the greatest, and it feels great, right? Like, this is the most important thing that I could ever accomplish, and here I am, and I've done it. Um, my sport is really important to the world, and so now I have done this amazing thing in something that really matters. That's what we're expecting, something along those lines, right? Maybe not in those exact words, but that's the spirit behind it with all the energy. Um, but that's not the interview, that's not what the interviewer got from Rose Nama Yunus. When, she, when, when he asked her what this championship means to her, she said, I want to try to use my gift of martial arts to make this world a better place and change the world. This belt don't mean nothing, man, is what she said. <laughs> Just be a good person. Let's give each other hugs and be nice, man. I know we fight, but this is entertainment. Afterwards, it's nothing. How about that? <laughs> That's perspective, isn't it? She just beat the tar out of someone, and now she's saying, let's give each other hugs and be nice. <laughs> she sees that. She sees that even though this is the thing that she's been working her whole life to achieve, it isn't the real goal. It's a means to an end. So you got to wonder, where does someone get the wisdom and perspective to hold, to hold such a major accomplishment so loosely, right? She's holding this major accomplishment loosely. How can she look at this event that might well be the highlight of her entire life and say, this belt don't mean nothing? Well, there's more to this story, actually. A couple days before the fight, at the weigh-in, we caught a glimpse of an answer to that question. Um, during her weigh-in, Rose was getting taunted mercilessly by the champ. Uh, the champ was in her face, insulting her, uh, berating her. And uh, part of this story is Rose has had family members with severe mental health issues, and the champ was bringing up all of that, too, trying to shove it in her face to distract her from her destination. And the whole time, Rose Nama Yunus's gaze was like someplace fuzzy and far off, in the distance, as if she couldn't even hear the words of her opponent, as she whispered something too quietly for anyone in the crowd to hear. And after the weigh-in, the interviewer came up and said, what were you saying? And it turns out, Rose was praying the Lord's Prayer. Where did she get perspective to look beyond her greatest accomplishment and see something greater on the other side? from life experience that taught her to take nothing for granted and a faith that gave her a better answer to the question, where are you going? There are so many people who have had their destinations changed or reframed by God. I'm one of them. <laughs> and that happens so that they can live the life that God has called them to live. And whether you're meandering through life or you have a clear destination, God still wants to breathe new life into the way that you answer the question, where are you going? I could tell you about my friend Iris. I'm going to tell you about my friend Iris. This is her. That's Iris. She worked as a civil servant for 30 years and then heard God calling her to be a pastor. And so uh, she made steps to becoming a pastor. She was working full-time, going to graduate school to fulfill the educational requirements and caring for her dying mother all at once. Sounds like a challenging season of life. And she told me this story just the other day. She was telling me this story with a huge smile on her face because uh, the struggles along the journey of life are nothing 
for the satisfaction of living out the, the life that God has made you to live. And when you're living right there in the sweet spot of God's will for your life, uh, you can't help but smile. And that's something that we've discovered here as a church. Northern Light has had its share of struggles. We've had seasons of growth and seasons of transition. We've had seasons of financial stress and also incredible blessing. But through it all, we are committed to following wherever God leads. There have been more than a few occasions when I feel kind of like Moses <laughs> with someone tugging on my sleeve saying, do you even know where we're going? <laughs> um, and though the destination has not always been clear, our direction is set as we follow a God who can clearly see the path lay ahead of us. So we move through each day and each season in trust, taking one step at a time in faith. So where are you going? Where are you going how do you imagine your life different in five years or in one year or in a month? You can make your life a little different today, even today, so that those dreams... But more importantly, how can you be like Abraham, trusting God for the journey ahead by taking one faithful step at a time in a direction set by the God who loves you. We each have to ask that question for ourselves. We have to be part of a community that is asking that question. And we have to put our faith into practice through kindness and devotion and prayer and talking to people about how Jesus has changed our lives. These are the things that take us from where we are to where we want to be. We are part of Abraham's story. His story is our story. We're in continuity. We're just at a different place in the book. When we set out in faith, we'll be part of how God blesses the world, just like Abraham. Because frankly, it doesn't matter where you're going as long as you go there with God. And when you follow God, there's no telling how far you'll go. Pray with me. God, we thank you so much that you do not leave us to figure this out on our own. Because if that were the case, man, we are in trouble. But no, you come to us with your wisdom, with your spirit that is alive within us when we put our trust in you to guide us not just to the next job or the next relationship or uh, the next house to move into. You guide us to where we truly belong. You help us to find our home in you. Give us the strength, the courage, and the faith to do that in small ways even today.